Florence Ogilvie Bell, the 1st of May 1913 to the 23rd of November 2000, later Florence Sawyer, was a British scientist who contributed to the discovery of the structure of DNA. She was an X-ray crystallographer in the lab of William Astbury. In 1938, they published a paper in Nature that described the structure of DNA as a pile of pennies. Topic: Early life. Florence Ogilvie Bell was born at 47 Hanover Road, Bronsbury Park, London, the second daughter of Thomas Bell and his wife, Annie Mary Lucas. Her father was a photographer and later advertising manager who had been born in Allendale, Northumberland, and later he moved to Greycoats, Ambleside. Florence grew up in London and attended Haberdasher's Ace Girls School in Acton. Topic. Education Bell studied natural sciences at Girton College, Cambridge between 1932–1935, concentrating on chemistry, physics and mineralogy. Whilst a student at Girton College, Cambridge, she was taught how to use X-ray crystallography to study biological molecules by John Desmond Bernal. She moved to the University of Manchester, where she worked with Lawrence Bragg on protein crystallography. In 1937, William Astbury wrote to Lawrence Bragg looking for a good crystallographer, and he recommended Bell as an excellent candidate. In 1937 Bell arrived at the University of Leeds, where she joined Astbury's laboratory. During her postgraduate studies she used X-ray diffraction to characterize biomolecules, including nucleic acids. She received her Ph.D. in 1939. <laughs> <laughs> Career Astbury became interested in DNA, and Bell's work demonstrated it was a regular, ordered structure of nucleotides separated by 3.3 to 3.4a. She studied the nucleic acids in yeast, pancreases, tobacco mosaic virus and thymus. She recognized that the beginnings of life are clearly associated with the interaction of proteins and nucleic acids. Bell and Astbury published an X-ray study on DNA in 1938, describing the nucleotides as a pile of pennies. Astbury presented their work at the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. Their recent developments on X-ray studies of proteins were included in the conference proceedings. X-ray and the stoichiochemistry of proteins, an X-ray study of thymonucleic acid, and optical and X-ray examination and direct measurement of built-up protein multilayers. At the time, they were unaware that DNA can change conformation from a to B form with humidity, and as a result their photographs are more blurry than photo 51. Astbury greatly admired Bell's willingness to challenge his ideas, referring to her as his Vox Diabolica, devil's advocate. Astbury's original appointment at the University of Leeds was to study textile physics, where he identified a change in keratin inside wool fibers from alpha to beta form on stretching. In 1939 Bell gave a talk about textiles during an Institute of Physics conference at the University of Leeds, which was covered in the Yorkshire Evening Post in an article entitled, Women Scientist Explains. In the article Bell was described as a slim University of Cambridge graduate. In 1941 Bell was enlisted to the Women's Auxiliary Air Force. The University of Leeds and William Astbury fought to get her back to the laboratory, keeping her position on hold and writing to the war office. But Bell had fallen in love with an American serviceman, Capt. James Herbert Sawyer, and wrote to the university to say she was going to get married and move to the States. Bell and Sawyer were married 21 December 1942 at St. Mary's Church in Ambleside. She then moved with her husband to the United States where she was employed by the British Air Commission in Washington, D.C. and later she worked as an industrial chemist for the Magnolia Petroleum Company in Beaumont, Texas. She died in Hereford in 2000. Topic. Legacy 
The importance of Bell's work on DNA is that, although today we know that several features of her proposed model are incorrect, it nevertheless showed that DNA had a regular, ordered structure that could be studied using X-ray crystallography and so laid the foundations for later work by Maurice Wilkins, Rosalind Franklin and Raymond Gosling as well as providing James Watson and Francis Crick with a key measurement, the distance between adjacent bases, when they began their own attempt to build a model of DNA. It is also worth noting that this work was done at a time when most scientists believed that proteins were the genetic material and that DNA was just a structural component composed of a monotonous repeat of bases. Bell's notebook is held in the Leeds University Archives. 